Uh, Mr. Bertolino, we thank you for your time. Uh, some major news today, and the remains have been identified. Tell us what you've learned. Uh, just a short while ago, I confirmed with Chris and Roberto Laundry that representatives from the Northport uh, Police Department visited their home and advised them that the remains were positively identified as those of Brian. Have they been asked to identify the remains in person? No, they have not. We had previously provided uh, items for DNA testing and confirmation, and it's my understanding is that is what was used to identify the remains. Under the circumstances, uh, I think, first of all, this is difficult news for any parent uh, to receive. How are your clients doing? I've been using the word distraught for the last uh, couple of days now, and, you know, they're extremely upset. And for some unknown reason, there are still people outside of their home, you know, yelling and screaming and causing a ruckus, uh, which, you know, any parent that's grieving the loss of a child should not have to deal with that. This has been a difficult few weeks for so many families, the Petitos as well. Do your clients understand the focus and attention on them? Of course they understand it. And it's been, um, how should I say, it's been uh, very difficult to bear. Many have asked why they got a lawyer, why they hired you. And? I'm sorry, you cut out there. I'm going to ask that again. Why did your clients lawyer up? Well, you used the term lawyer up. I've been a friend of uh, Chris Laundry for over 25 years. And when uh, I got a phone call from Chris uh, advising me that he was getting some inquiries from uh, law enforcement, uh, he asked me if I could assist them. And of course, I was more than glad to do so. At any point in the last five weeks, have you spoken with Brian Laundry? Yes, I spoke to Brian Laundry on September 12th and September 13th. And what can you share about that conversation? Not much. Any conversation I had with Brian Laundry is, uh, is privileged. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, Chris and Roberta have been worried about Brian Laundry since uh, Brian went out for the hike uh, on that Monday. And, you know, from there, there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of accusations. Um, a lot of uh, news outfits have proliferated that misinformation. And I firmly believe that's why these protesters are out there, um, because this, this has just become a circus, uh, which there was no need for it to be that way. Did you ever see Brian Laundrie in person when he returned to Florida? I did not. And when was the last time his parents saw him before he went hiking? The morning he left for the hike. Have you believed over the last few weeks that he was alive? We were hopeful that he was alive um, because we had not heard from him and there was no sign of him after all of the search efforts that law enforcement had made. Um, obviously, each passing day and week, you know, we understood that there might be a grim reality coming in the future. Those did, were uh, confirmed today. Did Brian's parents share with you? Did he share a plan with them? A plan for what? A plan for what he was going to do. His plan was to go out for a hike and uh, absorb the fresh air, is what I understand. Was Brian in communication with his parents after he left the house on cell phone or in any other way? No, he was not. I believe that was clarified that Brian had left his cell phone at home. Did Brian and have yet, any way to yet, communicate? And yet, and yet, excuse me, Monty, and yet the news outlets, indeed Fox News just yesterday, had an anchor and pundits on their air setting forth how the laundry parents and myself were communicating with burner phones with Brian over the last several weeks. Well, I think there's a lot of questions. Fit? There's a lot of questions that everyone has. So my question to you is, have you communicated with Brian at any point after you spoke with him on the phone on the 12th and 13th? No, I haven't. Did you know where he was? I knew that he went to the reserve. Let's talk about the reserve. A lot of people can't wrap their minds around the, the wrap their minds around the fact that the reserve had been searched week after week, was reopened to the public, and then less than 24 hours, the parents went out there. What did they share with you about their reasoning for going out there, and why they knew specifically where to go? You know, Monty, as I, I've stated several times yesterday and, and now throughout today. 
you know, it's not about knowing specifically where to go. The park was just recently opened. I believe it was Tuesday or Wednesday that the park was open. Chris and Roberta wanted to go in the park again to search for their son. Specifically where to go was start at the beginning. And as has been, how shall I say, confirmed, both with a news reporter and with the police department and the FBI being present, they started at the beginning of the preserve. It just so happened that that's where Brian was. So my thought would be anybody who's questioning that, it's not too bright. Well, clarify that because I think no one has the answers here. Certainly the public doesn't. You have more answers than most. We assume that the parents knew more than we do. So clarify what the public doesn't understand about what's so going on. What the public doesn't understand, I don't understand. You have a trailhead. The trailhead marks the beginning of a trail. You don't jump from the sky and land in the middle of the preserve. You start at the trailhead. That's where the parents started. The parents walked into the park from the entrance to the park or the trailhead. They went about a mile or so, and that's where they found the items and the remains. What is so difficult to understand about that? Well, I think it's hard to grapple with the fact that the reserve had been searched so extensively by FBI professionals over the last four or five weeks, and they hadn't come across anything. And then all of a sudden, we have several items and human remains. I think that's what people aren't fully understanding, uh, the timing of that. So once again, I don't understand what the public doesn't understand. Everyone from the FBI to local enforcement to news reporters, to the Laundry family, has confirmed that area of the park was underwater. I am told that it was waist deep at some times. So from four to five weeks ago being completely underwater, when the search teams went through there, what did they expect to find? Now that the water has receded, the woods off the trail are more accessible. It's not very difficult. Because it's very simple and the public doesn't understand simplicity or the truth, you want to make something of it. And when I say you, I don't mean you in particular, I mean the public. So walk us through the phone call that you got from the laundries. Was this Tuesday night? They said, we want to go back out to the reserve. What was that conversation like and what did they tell you? So to be clear, I talked with the laundries at least twice a day for the last month. And when I spoke with them on Tuesday evening, Chris informed me that he wanted to go to uh, the reserve on Wednesday with Roberta. They wanted to know if I thought that was a good idea. We talked about it. I said, it absolutely is a good idea and it's fine, you should go. But are you concerned about being followed by the press? They indicated to me that they were concerned about the press, but they were willing to, to deal with it as they've been dealing with it. I said, I think it's a good idea to notify law enforcement and I did so through a text message to my contact at the uh, Northport Police Department. The responsive text message was a very short, thank you for the heads up. Wednesday morning, when Chris and Roberta were at the preserve at, at 7 a.m., law enforcement was there respectfully to accompany them. And what I was told afterwards that their main purpose or concern was that the press didn't harass the laundries uh, through the uh, through the preserve. Did they ask you to contact the police? No, they did not. Obviously, you know, it was something that I suggested and it, it's a good thing that we did. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, imagine what the public would be thinking if the police weren't there. Imagine what the public would be thinking if a lot of this wasn't caught on video. And still, with an independent reporter, and a representative of law enforcement from a local agency, a representative from the FBI being present, and you still have these nonsensical people putting forth ideas that certain items were planted. You've called that now hogwash. That we, you've called, you've that called the, the, suggestion, Brian, the suggestion that me. items now were that planted that were hogwash. Why is that? I'm sorry, we were speaking over one another. Can that, you repeat that? Yes, of course. You have suggested that any claims that the laundries planted items in the reserve is hogwash. Why? 
Monty, I thought I was very clear in just explaining to you why. If, if you've got the FBI, the local PD, an independent news reporter all there at the same time seeing the same thing, you've got quote unquote surveillance of the laundries 24 seven by protesters and, and people of the press. When did you think this, the, these items were planted? And do you really think the, the laundries had skeletal remains of their son? you know, in a plastic bag and brought them to, to the preserve. Do you realize how ludicrous that is? How aggravating, how maddening it is to even hear those things? And the fact that it's being put out there by the press as well, that's where my level of frustration and anger is coming from. Maybe somebody with a platform should step up and say, hey, knock it off. This is just silly. So if I'm the only one who has to say that this is hogwash because I didn't want to say the word bullshit, then I'm going to say it. It's bull****. And I'm sorry if John Q. Public doesn't get that. Let me ask you, Mr. Bertolino, from the very beginning, uh, the public has been watching uh, this case unfold, starting with Gabby's disappearance. I think everyone understands your client's right to stay silent, to not talk. Uh, that silence does not presume guilt. However, in the court of public opinion, the last few weeks have been difficult. Legally, I understand that argument. But ethically, did they ever consider reaching out to the Petitos, reaching out to law enforcement in help finding Gabby? Unfortunately, Monty, I can't have that conversation with you at this time. Why is that? I just can't. It's not the appropriate time to have that conversation. But it's an ethical conversation, not just for the parents of Brian, but for you as an attorney. At any point when they were searching for Gabby, did you feel the need compelled to help? I can tell you that at this moment in time, Chris and Roberta Laundrie just learned that their son's remains were identified. He is now no longer with them. At some point in time in the future, there may be more information as what I felt, what the Laundries felt, what we, quote, ethically, you know, thought about the case. Um, now is not the time to do that. You've asked me the question two or three times. And I'm going to respectfully tell you again, it's not the time to discuss that. Have the, have the Laundries reached out to the Petito family at all? And has the Petito family reached out to them in recent days? The Laundry family has not reached out to the Petitos. And to my knowledge, the Petitos have not reached out to the Laundries. What are the Laundries' plans now? At the moment, they're going to grieve their son. And then what? Monty, I don't mean to be rude, and I know you have a job to do. They were just told less than a half hour ago that their son is deceased. Do you think that they really have thoughts on anything other than that their son is no longer with them? No, and I, I respect their privacy, and I can't begin to imagine the pain that they're going through. I just know that, that so many of us have questions about what has happened, not just to Gabby, but to Brian. Uh, the nation has been watching this search for him, uh, what turned into a, a manhunt across the country. And so we are, we are curious. We want answers. Uh, you're the closest to the family, and I want to know how they're doing. I want to know what their plans are. Monty, we don't have, I don't have any information on the plans that the laundries have. And I, and I want to tell you, because I've got to stop myself, I'm taking some of my anger and frustration out on you. As you may know, I knew Brian Laundry since he was an infant, since he was a small child. You know, this, this is hard. I've shed a tear or two today as well. I've shared that with the laundries. The fact that the public is continuing this nonsensical, we're hiding him in the beginning. We've uh, fed him food. We communicated with him. And every platform, because you hear that if you have a platform, you should use it for the good. You respect that, that they have the right to remain silent. But there are people in, in your position, maybe not you, but in your position, that never once pushed back on these so-called experts and pundits who did nothing but say, this is immoral, this is unethical. Somewhere along the line, somebody with a platform, someone in your position should have said, hey, you know what? Back off. This is America, and in our system of justice, they have the right to remain silent.
So I'm kind of a little perturbed that now I have to go back and explain how we didn't plant remains and personal items in a preserve when the upper echelons of law enforcement is telling everyone this is legit by their actions, by their words, and yet we have to now go back and somehow educate John Q. Public? And you guys perpetrate this. You put it forth and you put Well, I'm going to stop you right there. I have said a number of times that the laundry parents have every right to remain silent, whether the public agrees with that right or not. But our search is for answers, and that is where it will continue to lie. Answers not only in what happened to your client, Brian Laundrie, and what happens with his parents moving forward, but also what happened to Gabby. And there are many who are concerned that we may never know uh, what happened in this case, given what has transpired today. As I've said now for probably the fourth or fifth time, today is not the day to discuss that. You know what I want to ask you? I want to ask you, Mr. Bertolino, you mentioned that you have known Brian for years. That is one thing that we have not been able to get much on in the last month and a half. Who is Brian Laundrie? What kind of person was he? What do you know about him that you're willing to share? Moni, I, I know him as the child of a friend of mine. I, I didn't go to school with him. I didn't hang out with him. He's 30 years my junior. So to ask me what type of person he is, I'm sure he was a good kid, just like every parent says their kid is, their kid is a good kid. When all is said and done, I'm pretty much, how shall I say, not going to discuss anything further other than what type of, of child Brian was, other than to say, Brian is no longer with us. The family is mourning, and, and I would hope that we could, you know, let them mourn, let them grieve, and, and maybe somebody besides myself could come out and say, hey, protesters, go away tonight. Could you do that? I just have a couple more questions. Have you spoken with Cassie? Not today, but I have spoken with uh, her and Jim recently, yes. Do you plan to continue to represent the family moving forward, and do you see a need for that? I will be representing the family as long as it's necessary. Anything else you'd like to share and clarify about what has happened? No, I just want to apologize to you as an individual for my anger and frustration. But I've been dealing with this all day, and I've put out some statements that, that this is nonsense. And, and to hear it come from, from a platform like yours, that the question is even posed. I get that the internet is a whole different world, that the Twitter world and the people who play in that world I understand that they may have a need for this, but for more respectful, respectful, respectable organizations to do the same thing, I find troubling. What do you find so troubling about the public's curiosity and search for answers? Curiosity and search for answers is one thing. Coming up with completely off the charts in, in the scheme of reality, propositions of, of, of literally planting evidence, planting articles, even planting the remains, it, it's, it's just beyond, it, it's beyond compare. That's what I find troubling. So just one more thing about that, and I promise I will let it go. Did your clients go out to the reserve prior to yesterday morning on their own at any time? Yes, they did. Back in early September, I shouldn't say early September, mid-September, which would have been the 14th and the 15th. Were they there with Brian or with authorities? No, they were there on their own. That was the day after Brian had went for the hike and didn't come home. And what did they do there? They walked around the trails looking for Brian initially. Is this when they picked up the car? On the second day, they picked up the car, correct. Did they find any items or anything that led them to believe that he was out there at that time? Beside the car? No. All right, Mr. Bertolino, we appreciate your time. I know this is a difficult day for many, including you. We thank you for giving us a moment to talk about it. Marty, once again, I want to apologize to you because I don't mean to take my frustration out on you. You are the first person I've spoken to since I've learned the news. And, you know, I'm upset, I'm angry, 
And for the last four hours, I've been dealing with, uh, I have to just call it nonsense. Well, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to come back on when you're ready to share more and also to Brian Laundrie's parents when they're ready. Good enough, Marnie. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.